Good morning, everybody. Uh, so, uh, I'm professor of management uh, studies. A part of my research uh, focuses on human resource management policies within a large corporation and how this evolved over the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, today I'm going to present you a synthesis of these studies and um, the presentation will draw on the paper which has been circulated uh, to you, uh, published with two French colleagues, uh, Amélie Seigneur and Florence Palpacuère, in the British Journal of Industrial Relations. Uh, so, um, I would like to start off with an outline of my research approach. Uh, I developed with others a systemic approach to management, uh, focusing on the interaction uh, between three dimensions, uh, namely governance patterns of the firm, competitive strategies, and human resource management, HRM policies, uh, which also includes uh, the form, the organizational form, the evolution of organizational form. Uh, I consider these uh, dimensions as closely interrelated and depending on the choices corporation make on three markets. Uh, that is a product market with clients and competitors, uh, labor and sourcing markets with employee and suppliers and capital market with shareholder. Uh, so my approach is also uh, configurational uh, insofar as it considers uh, the choices corporation make on these markets as closely interrelated. Uh, the nexus formed by uh, these uh, dimensions has to be framed uh, within the context of today's globalization, uh, which is characterized uh, by the rise of institutional investors on capital markets uh, and the globalization of labor and uh, product markets. At the management level, uh, this has uh, bro brought about the financialization and globalization of strategies with a focus on core businesses and global brands development and the spread of, the spread of transnational production networks or global val value chain, now you know this concept, uh, and market-based HRM model. Um, during this presentation, I will explain some of the changes that, uh, affect, uh, that are affecting each management dimension. Uh, while doing so, I will particularly focus on the transformation of HRM policies in relation to changes in governance patterns and competitive strategies. Uh, I will also frame these evolutions within the French socio-institutional socio context. Uh, and I will uh, conclude by highlighting uh, the consequences of these strategic shifts in terms of greater insecurity and inequality of treatment among employees. So we will see that with this uh, model, we have a few winners and a lot of losers, I think. Uh, so uh, the outline, you have, you have it. Um, uh, we will see uh, two major points. Uh, the first one, in the first one, we'll, uh, we'll explain the rise of global financialized corporations. Uh, you know, I think, uh, this um, process. And uh, in the second, in the second, po second point, uh, we will um, we try to uh, to mention to explain the consequences of this uh, evolution uh, in terms of uh, HRM model in large corporation. So the first one, the rise of global financialized corporations. Uh, during the 80s and 90s, developed countries have 
known a um, major shift toward a new form of patrimonial or shareholder capitalism. Uh, this capitalism is defined by the rise of financial markets in the economy and the rise of shareholder as prominent of sorry institutional investor as prominent shareholders. This uh, movement has been initiated in the US during the 80s. Uh, this, uh, uh, and over the following decades, this financialization has spread to European countries such as France. Uh, as we will see, these changes uh, in the large corporation uh, patterns of governance are closely linked uh, with a shift towards a global pattern of competition. Uh, so what does corporate financialization mean? Uh, financialization, this concept refers uh, to the prioritization of financial returns in the objectives of the firm. Uh, so objective to increase shareholder returns have become predominant in the strategic management of large corporations. According to the shareholder value ideology, shareholders are the legitimate recipient of the value created by the firm. So such belief uh, directly impacts the way corporations choose to allocate their cash flows. Major US corporations then shift uh, from a retain and reinvest strategy to a strategy of downsize, downsize and distribute. In the first case, cash flows are used uh, to sustain corporate growth. With the second strategy, work externalization and dismissals are combined to enable greater cash flow distribution to shareholders in the form of uh, dividends or chair buybacks. Uh, what are the key factors in the diffusion of shareholder ideology? Uh, the race of financial results is combined with the adoption of new performance measures. Uh, these uh, new performance indicators set expected returns on investment at high levels of about 15%. In uh, mature markets, uh, such levels can only be obtained uh, via restructuring, drastic cost reduction and social dumping measures. Uh, we can also mention newly adopted performance indicators such as economic value added. Um, uh, within this context, greater investor pressures have been passed on to top management of large corporations. This implicitly uh, promotes a transfer of risk uh, from shareholders uh, to firms and in turn uh, from firms to employees and suppliers. Uh, this process of uh, financialization operates through a diversity of devices. Uh, we can mention more and more important reporting processes uh, with tools organizing them in different layers from business unit to corporate headquarters and then in turn from consolidating entities uh, to financial markets. More and more interaction also between uh, the firm's top management and uh, financial uh, markets uh, through um, uh, roadshows or conference calls or one-to-one -one meetings where management meets with uh, potential investors. Uh, we will see now a distinctive form of financialization uh, in France. Uh, why shareholder capitalism spread from the US overseas during the 90s, 
uh, the importance of the changes generated some disagreement. According to observations, forces were not converging uniformly uh, towards shareholder capitalism across countries. In fact, uh, there are national specificities which are persistent. Uh, by the way, in the French context, uh, the strategic shift uh, towards financialization was initiated by corporation uh, rather deliberately. Uh, indeed, at that time, corporation engaged in global strategy on product markets. Their primary aim was to build leadership position at the transnational level rather than at the domestic level. Uh, so this process uh, generate, uh, generated a more and more major important acquisition uh, movement. So uh, corporate efforts uh, to meet the demands of financial uh, markets in fact were made to boost stock prices in order to finance global strategies on product markets. So in their race to global leadership, uh, top management uh, engage more and more with financial markets. In turn, financial markets identified global strategy as key levers for value creation, shareholder value creation. In that sense, uh, the pursuit of global leadership and financialization are um, uh, uh, two angles of the same phenomenon. And uh, we can note that the term financialization with reflects itself very well uh, the idea that finance and strategy are very closely linked together. Okay, um, excuse me, just one minute. Okay, uh, the French form of financialization is linked to a global pattern of competition uh, promoted by top managers. Uh, this model is based on global specialization in core businesses in order to produce uh, so-called pure players. Uh, investment in branding, marketing and research and development and investment and or systematic cost reduction in manufacturing a basic and basic service processing. Uh, this principle or model was promoted as holding superior capacities for scale economies and shareholder value delivery. Uh, so now uh, we will see uh, the effects of uh, this evolution uh, toward, uh, toward uh, on human resource management practices, practices in large corporations. Uh, how do financialization and globalization affect corporate strategy? Uh, in terms of HRM. Uh, in the late uh, 90s, a uh, leading American thinker working on US employment highlighted the increasing pressure uh, exerted by investors on large firms in terms of cutting costs and improving, improving profits. Uh, this poli these policies were set not only to downsize, to downsize on the basis for, of dismissal and subcontracting, but also to extend to labor the just-in-time uh, procurement practices that could be seen uh, for other production factors, particularly through continuous hire and fire on uh, labor market. Uh, some observers announced the demise of American internal labor markets. Among them, Peter Capelli said that career jobs were dead and that companies were managing without commitment market-based employment relationship. This relationship is built on depersonalized 
bilateral and short-term exchanges. Uh, in large US corporation, work communities were dissolved with the market becoming the dominant coordinate, coordinating mechanism. Um, if the shift towards a market-based HRM model uh, as well established in the US and the UK, uh, the effect that the financialization had on employment relations in European countries remained more controversial. Uh, in fact, according to research, in France, a greater financialization doesn't come at the expense of the workers insofar as a strong legal system continues to offer employment protection. Indeed, within the French uh, institutional context, employers must provide a legal reason, either economic or personal, for dismissing workers. Economic dismissals relate to a firm's employment policy, including downsizing. Personal dismissal pertain to an employee faulty behavior or insufficient performance. When economic, uh, just a precision, when economic dismissals reached a threshold of 10 within a 30-day period, they fall under a collective procedure. Uh, this procedure requires the employer to inform both the local union and the labor department about this, their dismissal plans. Uh, in fact, the, objectives, the objective of this plan is to give priority to displaced workers in subsequent rehiring and to demonstrate that no job alternative can be offered uh, to them elsewhere in the company. Uh, surprisingly, although downsi downsizing plans uh, often hit the headline of the economic press. Over the uh, 1995 to 2005 period, economic dismissal fell by 38%, whereas a personal dismissal grew by 70%. Uh, in 2000, 2010, Personal dismissal represented more than two-thirds of total dismissals, and there are 2.5 times more personal dismissal than economic dismissal. Uh, it's, here a very it's here very important to mention that if personal dismissals still requiring a legal reason, they fall outside outside the traditional scope of union intervention. So uh, their increase places a growing number of employees in the situations where they have to confront uh, their employers where, while being at the same time very isolated. Uh, so if they want to contest dismissal condition, for example, they can only do so by resorting to court uh, via the so-called Conseil des Prud'hommes, composed of elected representatives of employees and employers. Uh, so with such changes affecting the, affecting the firm's dismissal practices, we can consider that the French institutional context has become less protective of employees than it was when economic dismissal predominated in the country. Uh, so, uh, using a sample of uh, six multinational, uh, we uh, laid a survey, we have the details on the article, uh, we laid a survey focusing 
on the way in which this personal uh, dismissal are used and embedded in broader new HRM system. Uh, we conducted interviews with HR uh, managers or directors and skilled employees, including both managers and professionals. Uh, who were working or had been recently working for one of the six prominent French multinational in uh, our sample. Uh, our results uh, focus on cross similarities rather than the differences, uh, as well on the overall patterns that unfold at various times and, of course, to different degrees uh, within the firm studied. On the basis of this survey, we argue that such a market-based uh, model uh, has gained growing influence across large corporations in France. Uh, we are now characteri characterizing this model. We will first tackle the opening of internal labor market. Uh, so the shift toward a global financialized strategy acted as the start of the opening, uh, the start of the opening of internal labor market. Indeed, these strategies make necessary new managerial skill sets that corporations can obtain uh, through external hiring rather than uh, through internal promotions. Uh, so HRM uh, is now evolving towards an upper out system where managers have to leave after a few years if they don't climb up uh, the hierarchical ladder. Rather than uh, internal promotion, financial compensation based on individualized performance-oriented schemes plays a central role in the market-based relationship that companies aim to develop with employees. Uh, this system can be seen as combining the carrot and the stick. Uh, at EAPIS, performance uh, systems are used not only to reward, but also to sanction. Je vais super vite. Um, we, uh, we identify significant differences uh, in the ways uh, skilled employees of various ages uh, experienced the she this shift towards a more contractual uh, employment relationship. Uh, we used an Im empirically distinction between seniors uh, defined as uh, age 40 or more and juniors defined as being younger than 40. Uh, so uh, seniors, seniors demonstrate a strong attachment to internal career based on employment stability uh, and competency development policies. They also demonstrate a strong, a strong attachment to values inherited from the Fordist compromise as solidarity, uh, than, uh, which social policies helped to promote within their company. Uh, so they, 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 they show a strong link to, to the firm. The distance expressed by juniors stands in sharp contrast uh, with seniors' patent learning from firm-based communities. Uh, juniors have, have difficulties adhering to corporate culture, which they perceive as highly normative. Uh, they are distanc distancing themselves from the firm in such a way that the trust component experienced by seniors is almost non-existent uh, for them. Uh, so going through a dismissal plays a role 
in the formation of, show, of such distance attitudes. Uh, consequently, juniors attempt to strike better balance between their professional and personal lives. Uh, although the presence of markets become um, a strong feature of employment patterns in the firm we have studied, their importance translates in different uh, way depending on uh, the um, on employees' level of responsibility. Indeed, HRM become uh, increasingly segmented, drawing lines between global and local levels in the company and between a very small elite of high potential whose careers are actively managed and the rest. Uh, this segmentation is implemented in various, in various ways within the firm studied, uh, from a deliberately dual, dual system to a softer mix of high potential and traditional uh, career systems. This translates uh, into distinct work experiences and career opportunities for local and versus glo lo global employees. Uh, global uh, employees play a key role in running globalization and financialization strategies. Uh, this small elite is trained in order to implement global financialized strategies on the basis of accelerated job rotation across countries and business units inside the company. Uh, high potentials typically stay for an average of two, three years in a given position uh, within the firm. They benefit, for, they benefit from dedicated compensation schemes including stock option, of course, and accelerated compensation increases. Uh, they are selective with their employers and they use uh, the bargaining power they have with employers. At the same time, global managers are expected to maintain unfailing growth performance. Uh, and high potential don't benefit any explicit or implicit uh, promises of employment security. If one of, if one of them fails to meet a work objective in a given project, uh, then one can lose the HP label, label sorry, without notice or be asked to leave the company. Uh, as for local uh, skill employed, um, they feel downgraded to a subordinate role within the firm. Uh, at the local level, uh, employees are expected to take the responsibility of managing their own career under market-oriented conditions. Uh, so intranet job firms have been set up at a number of firms in order to match internal job demand and supply. Uh, their speeches converge um, to portray changes toward a new form of control and decision making that they perceive as more remote, uh, depersonalized and less uh, predictable than in the past. Consequently, people find it more difficult uh, to understand the logic and orientation of their own job. Uh, according to local employees, corporations do not give uh, everyone the same changes uh, and same attention. Uh, we could observe across our sample an accelerated uh, mobility as well as the use of individual performance appraisal systems to produce situations uh, where dismissal for <coughs> personal reason become a routine part of manager and HR activity staff, staff activity. Uh, 
significant differences can be noted between global and local employees uh, regarding the ways in which they deal with uh, personal dismissals. Uh, global employees legitimate these dismissals consid considering it uh, as, a, as a tool, uh, a management tool. Global managers are themselves exposed to this uh, type of dismissal and they are able, able to negotiate a financial package uh, when leaving the company that is in French um, legal terms a transaction uh, by which current and future sources of legal conflict are to be extinguished. Um, in the case uh, we look, uh, we could look at negotiation were in general straightforward. Uh, this form of dismissal is perceived as the contractual uh, arrangement. By contrast, uh, personal dismissals produce a feeling of exclusion uh, for local employees. Uh, for some local managers, such dismissals follow um, an eviction process, meaning a demoralization campaign aimed at pushing them out of their job. Uh, local employees also feel that the legal reason for their dismissal uh, was imposed to them. Transactions offered to local employees are typically equivalent uh, to the legal indemnities that their employer uh, would have to pay under the French law. Most employees refuse such uh, transaction and choose to uh, sue their employer, uh, contesting the legal reason for their, their dismissal and seeking uh, higher financial compensations. Uh, however, the choice uh, to go to court is not exclusively, exclusively based on financial consideration. It is also conveys a symbolic demand for some form of justice. So, uh, while our case studies are by definition limited uh, in scope, they allow us to identify the firm uh, specific ways in which the influence of financialization and globalization unfold in the management of uh, uh, skilled employees and how it contributes uh, to reduce um, employment protection and stability for co-workers uh, within the firms studied. Dismissal for personal reasons, uh, in fact, have become a management tool allowing firms to individualize employment termination and to introduce flexibility in their relationship to co-workers who benefited from standard forms of employment previously associated with stabilities. Uh, so, of course, um, while some, some firms attracted the attention of the media, uh, for example, Alcatel, um, by systemizing personal dismissals on large scale, Others, uh, la, uh, as AXA, for example, uh, made a softer use of this uh, dis dismissal. Uh, so I will stop here and I have uh, other um, slide, but I think it will be, uh, it, I will use maybe them for the discussion. I've been very short, in fact. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was really interesting and also the paper was uh, really easy to read. Uh, so, the presentation will uh, introduce the research paper first. Uh, then we will uh, make a summary of um, the situation of the labor market in uh, other European countries and in China. And finally we will end up with the remarks and conclusions. 
So the methodology of the paper was the following. First, uh, the changes in the human resource management policies from the 1980s onwards. Afterwards, a, descrip a description of the recent history of the six multinational corporations, AXA, uh, Alcatel, Danone, and Nestle, Carrefour, IBM. And uh, interviews with skilled employees, mostly in these uh, 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 companies, but also in others, as I understood. Yeah. <clears throat> So the implication of the paper were that labor is becoming uh, always more a just-in-time factor of production, and firms change this, their strategy from retain and invest policy to downsize, downsize and redistribute in order to maximize shareholder value. Still, however, there has, been a com there has not been a complete homogenization, like in the case of the uh, coordinated market economies like France, Germany, uh, where institutional investors were still much uh, uh, less present in the shareholders. So the sample analyzed these six uh, multinational companies, four of which were French, one American and one Swiss. Uh, the, the shareholding structure first was analyzed in detail, as well as, as, well as which strategy they used. Uh, for example, mergers in the case of Carrefour and AXA. And, uh, or a new CEO in the case of the other companies. Uh, then the product, the product market strategy, for example, the change in the, uh, in the organization, refocusing production, and particularly drastic was the case of IBM, which changed completely from producing, being a manufacturer, to being um, a global business services provider. <coughs> so the survey, which uh, came out of this, the results were that uh, there were different perceptions depending on age, there were junior against seniors and qualifications, skilled employees and uh, uh, high potentials, which were the agricultural, no, they were the managers. And skilled employees are, refers to, are referred to as the cattle. Um, seniors demonstrated strong attachment to values of solidarity and promoted which, is, which was promoted by the company Social Policy. And juniors did not trust instead the company and were attempting to better balance professional uh, life and personal life. Uh, but none of, none of them as employment security. However, the uh, potentials could benefit of considerable bargaining power in the dismissal processes. And finally, uh, the role of the legislation which was trying to push towards more flexibility, sometimes successfully, sometimes uh, they didn't manage. I will have some detail about the evolution of legislation after okay. all the okay. debate. So the conclusions of the paper were that uh, uh, it was stressed on the destruction of values, uh, the humanizing corporate practices, uh, and insecurity and inequality increased, and protection and stability, of course, as a consequence, decreased. <clears throat> so here we have analyzed the dismissal regulation across Europe. Okay, in France, the word uh, real and adequate <coughs> is required for personal dismissals, and if there is no just, just cost, the firm must reimburse unemployment benefits to the state for a maximum of six months. Uh, the employer or the employee can refuse the reinstatement uh, in this case, uh, the indemnity must be larger than the last six monthly wages. And uh, the employee must at least have two years of, uh, of seniority, and the enterprise must be bigger than 11 uh, employees. There is also, the, I didn't mention it here, there is, uh, a bit. there is the possibility of mutual agreement in the case of light fault, but this could involve uh, uh, the risk of free riding. The employee could, uh, uh, could get the benefit from the state and the firm they could agree on something, the firm doesn't have to pay it, and the employee gets the money. <clears throat> In the case of Germany, it uh, seems to be very efficient. Mm -hmm. The employer has to seek the advice of the Betriebsrat. Uh, it is not binding, but uh, uh, their absence makes the dismissal illegitimate. Also, the employer has the burden, of pro the burden proof to demonstrate that there are compelling economic reasons or disciplinary reasons. 
Uh, otherwise, if there are, they are not present, the employer needs to pay half of the monthly salary for each year of work. And in the case of no rate statement, there is an indemnity from 12 to 18 mensalities. Also, the role of the court is important because it can decide whether to reinstate uh, the, the worker or not. Uh, in the case of UK, the employer must consult employees and, ex and explain the reasons. Uh, it's not like in, the, in your paper you mentioned that uh, sometimes some workers uh, went to the, to the employer and the employer just gave them a letter, mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, in the case of the UK, this doesn't, uh, cannot work because the employer needs to uh, explain the objective and non-discriminatory reason of the dismissal to consult. Then there is a large discretionality of judges and the employee can go to court to ask for a reinstatement. Okay, Spain is different because it was it's probably the most liberal one. Uh, the employee can be dismissed for justified illness. Uh, so 30% of the days in two months or 25% uh, in four months during one year. Also for inad inadequacy or lack of flexibility in adapting to new circumstances, uh, to guilty and serious disciplinary causes, of course. It, ju it just needs to have 30 days advance notice to do that. Mm. Then, uh, there is an indemnity of 20 days for each month of seniority, maximum 12, and the judge can dispute the legitimacy of dismissal if it's not legitimate, uh, the worker can choose between being restated or an indemnity of 33 days uh, of work per each year of seniority. Okay. Thank you. Hello. So right now I'm going to introduce a little bit about China. Actually, you know, China is so big, so I cannot really introduce the whole picture of, of it. So uh, actually, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history. So we will we we'll have a look. Um, China started from 1949 to 1978. Before 1978, we were a closed economy, you know, um, in a very, uh, how to say, disadvantaged situation. But at that time, all those people, uh, we have a live job assignment. Everybody is assigned to a job, and that job is for life. So at that time, we are a communist country, so everybody has a spirit of crew, which means like, this communist mechanism, we are only a crew of it, so everybody work for his job and working for life. And after 1978, um, the China economy opened up to the world, and especially after 2001, when China got into the WTO, we opened up and we tried to do those four economic transformation, liberalization, and privatization, market Privatization and globalization. So um, actually, it's something the same pattern which we have been through here for the globalization part. Um, it's like before that everybody's assigned, but after that we got a contract. Um, actually, we don't have a contract like France. We don't have a contract for CDE, like for a permanent mm -hmm. job. Uh, we, we don't only got the contract jobs, and for the this. Mm, this missile, we, I, I've only checked the unemployment law, which shows that you will have a compensation of like 12 months maximum. Uh, and actually, let's get into this uh, story about this missile. Uh, it's kind of interesting because we have to see the standpoint of us. Uh, we are employee or we are employer. So that's quite different. Uh, I, I just left a big picture here, it's like Nusong, Du, Shakli, actually, I, I just noticed it's actually in Paris 13, it's very interesting. And I noticed there's a very small <laughs> uh, sentence behind, I, I'm not Shakli. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say, it's like, uh, we don't, mm, we are not really mm, in, from the same standpoint. For example, in this paper, I, actually I love this paper, it's really interesting, and those Interviewees, they're so cute. They, they have very powerful sentence, or you can say the complaints to those employees. But uh, anyway, it stands for only their own interest. So that's why I put the standpoint in the first uh, slide. Um, let's see. It's just only our personal views, so uh, please don't judge it. <laughs> um, 
in this paper, we analyze, focus on the skilled, um, how is it, skilled employees. But the definition of the skilled employees is like, uh, I remember that's the CAC, right? Mm -hmm. CAC. We have this category in France. Yeah, yeah, I know. So this category is mainly related to the payment. That actually is like an income category, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So for me, the skilled employees is far different from this uh, definition. Mm -hmm. um, I have done some research, actually some interviews with my Chinese friends, um, looking for how does it go for the skilled employee in China. Will they be dismissal when they're old, when they're senior uh, skilled workers? And the answer I got, um, the result is like, if you were really skilled em um, employees, for example, you are a mechanical engineer or an electronic engineer, civil engineer, you won't be fired because experience everything. Mm -hmm. uh, if you got like 20 years experience, you are number one in this industry. Mm -hmm. No one can replace you. Even hundreds of employees cannot replace you. That's why this kind of people will not be fired. So that's just a doubt about the skill employee definition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, look at the second uh, word, which is senior. We do a comparison study about senior and junior uh, employees. Uh, however, <laughs> um, in my opinion, actually, you know, I'm from China, and we have we're a socialist society. Um, actually, we found out like in France, is more communist or socialism than China, because you say. <laughs> You have a CDE contract, right? In China, we don't have such a thing. Um, for senior employees, why do you have to be dismissal at the end? Because their salary is too high. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the real reason. Uh, in China, no matter how many years you're working, probably your salary is going to grow in a certain speed. It's not so huge. I remember one day in FLF, <laughs> I saw the guy. Uh, an old man who's something like 50, and I saw the paper, and he's um, taking a shift of bag <laughs> on his hand. So I, I just checked the number, it's saying like 9,000 for a month. And actually that doesn't happen because I have a friend who uh, graduated from Polytechnic, which is one of the, actually the most, the best uh, engineer school in Paris or in France or even in Europe <coughs> one of the best. The salary he got is only 3,000. However, uh, according to the uh, Tragi yesterday, he's saying like we have to control our inflation rate uh, around 2%. But you know, French law um, has said like every salary, French employee's salary is uh, is going to be raised every year according to the inflation rate. So that's why our salary is going to compellingly increase every year. That's why it becomes a pressure, it becomes like a, a burden for employee, employers. So in my opinion, it's not really a problem of those senior workers. They're good, they're experienced. They, they have the technology, they have like the communication skills, they are really good. But the reason they have to be fired is only because the systematic thing. The system of French, um, how is it, French, French law, I don't know. Maybe that's not a problem. Maybe that's a kind of, um, how is it, uh, human, humanized mm -hmm. um, arrangement. That's really good. We admire it, but we cannot do that because that will has a, that would be the lack of the econo economic development. So, it's only a personal view. Anyway. <laughs> so um, for the dehumanizing, um, we would say like uh, it's the same thing. You start from the same point. If you are lack of uh, competitiveness, um, of course you will be treated dehumanizing. Like, actually, it's not really dehumanizing. It's only you're good or not. Um, my point of view. <laughs> um, and for me, globalization, because this article starts from globalization and financialization, um, the globalization for me is 
really good thing because it's it equals to diversity. You can look at this class we are <laughs> diversified the students we are from like more than more than eleven countries, I guess. Um, so however, within this diversity society, um, of course we will have lots of conflicts between each other. And how are we going to solve that? It's not like um, uh, sorry, I was a bit lost. Um, the globalization, because we are starting from different standpoints, we cannot solve uh, one problem with only one common agreement, because it's hard to get this common agreement. And, um, and actually, no one's view should be considered as uh, the best, because we are equal and we're diversified. So, um, so that's about the globalization. I think it's good, but it's hard to achieve. However, that's the target we need to go. Um, for the financialization, I think it's just a game. Um, it's the same thing. We start from the same point, and it's a game between each other. Right now, we have already um, analyzed the site for employees. However, we haven't analyzed the global picture, maybe the employers or the, to the whole economy. That's what do you mean by game? The game. The game means Just the like game, what do you mean? The, the game, right. Uh, the game, like uh, we are fighting. <laughs> One of us will, be win, uh, will, will, will win the game. So that's game. Or um, if you're gambling, for example, I, I say, I'm going what? to sell you uh, stuff. And it's $5. And you, you're, all, you're gambling, saying like, oh, I, I just can't pay three for that. Um, that that's a game. Yeah. You know? All of us, we we're bargaining, and for the competitiveness, it's like your lack of the bargaining power. That's why you're losing. So that's only some um, interview into this dismissal stuff. So my comment is only three of them. I have already explained earlier. Uh, the first one is the blue uh, definition, which is related to, yeah, you know that. <laughs> related to the skill and senior definitions. And uh, I feel that our sample is still very limited, although we have six um, multinational mm -hmm. companies, but we still lack of different industry stuff in this research. For example, I have mentioned the mechanism, m mechanical in engineer stuff. Um, I, I don't think we have it here, mm -hmm. because those in engineers are really different from our uh, guide, our managers, <laughs> although we are skilled, but actually we are replaceable. Um, um, the second limit probably could be the both side of the game we have to analyze it um, equally. Because I know this paper is very compassionate <laughs> with our standpoint is from the employees, the, the poor people. But the reason I show us new some value shaki is because we don't speak up only for pity. Um, why I'm saying that I'm not a Charlie is like their um, their words, their drawing is it, it really hurts. So I can understand. I, I don't mean they deserve to be killed, but I don't think they deserve to be praised. As mm -hmm. well. So the final end, when, which is the same thing to the standpoint, is like what are you pursuing? Okay. So I will give it back to so Nick. So my opponents. Um, as she already said, <laughs> the sample may have been uh, too small and too less representative. And uh, I also wanted to underline the problem of free riding. For example, employees may try to get fired for personal reasons to obtain generous uh, unemployment benefits. And also the role of qualification and the reflection in the market needs to be taken into account. For example, how well do uh, academic titles and competencies reflect the needs of the labor market? For example, technical skills are too less, uh, uh, too less common due to experience of uh, uh, human resources management managers. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, for a human resources manager, a uh, web market, uh, somebody who works in, uh, in communication, he received 300 CVs mm -hmm. uh, for, for that. He only received 10 for a, a web marketing statistician. 
and this calls into question everything regarding unemployment, competitivity, and, and so on. And uh, the questions? Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, is financialization and globalization responsible for the human dehumanizing effect, or is it an excuse to for human greediness? Uh, and countries like the northern countries, such as Denmark, can, it, can they be seen as examples for a good labor market, or are they too different in size and structure from France? Uh, what are possible ways to measure the impact of uh, human resource management policies on the interviews, or also uh, other other ways? Yeah. And do you support the European model or regulation in human resource management policies? Yeah. And the last one. Uh, whether employment security and firm competitivity are mutually ex exclusive things, or they can actually be, be together. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do you want to collect other questions from the audience, yes. or do you want to answer now? Who wants to ask questions? Rather, Jeffrey, okay, right now. Okay. Uh, Hi, oh, thank you for your presentation. It's really nice. I have some uh, some some queries and then a question. Okay. So basically, uh, I really like this uh, uh, this issue about uh, employment uh, of uh, this economic dismissal and personal dismissal. I want to know what happens, uh, what kind of dismissal is it when uh, an employee is terminated, uh, is, is dismissed because of, you know, that there are modifications in the employment contract. Which category will it fall? I mean, modification in the employment contract, or it can be because we see uh, the papers about uh, yeah, large corporations, so there can be issues of internal mobility, like transferring from parrots to Nantes, mm -hmm. so like that thing. Uh, also, again, because it's about large corporations and uh, the focus is on skilled employees. One of the, 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 uh, you know, the recent uh, uh, issues has been that firms, because when we look at skilled employees, it's very important that their skills are current skills because of innovation. It's very important I, I mean, as an employer, I would like employees who have the current set of skills and the current set of, set of skills get updated every three years and four years. So after three years, my skills might not be as relevant to the needs of my firm. Mm -hmm. So do you think that issue comes to play in terms of these dismissal issues? And uh, yeah, also in the discussions, uh, I, I saw this uh, uh, issue of real and serious cause. I think it's under the French code that when you dismiss an employee to this, a real and serious cause has to be given. Is, is it defined? What does actually, is it like, yeah? And my question is, uh, yeah, basically, uh, in the in the the, the the way discussions agreed uh, and they discussed uh, the issue of France, Germany, and UK. So, from your view, do you see actually a convergence happening towards, uh, let's say, maybe a liberal, um, you know, HRM model where it will be easy to just hire and fire? So, do you see any convergence, or how does you know France fit into that? So, just your views on that. Okay, Jeffrey. Um, I was wondering, it, maybe it wasn't clear to me exactly how personal dismissal is defined because there, there have to be reasons given for this personal dismissal and so if it is an economic consequence for them to be firing people, um, they can't just make up, make up a, a, false, a false reason and say, well, this person what, didn't like show up to work enough days, or they they were falling asleep at their desk, or something like that, and so they're bad workers, and we and we fired them because the person could be a perfectly good worker, and so they're. Um, I, I guess I'm just confused about how that's how that's defined, and then also how the courts have viewed personal dismissals. So you said that a lot of the workers are now suing um, if they are fired for personal. For, for these reasons, and they find it to be false, they take the, the company to court. What have the courts been saying, and have those rulings been over the years moving towards 
protecting workers or moving towards protecting businesses. Um, and then I was wondering if, if that was, a, I don't know if it's a common law or, or, a, or a, a common law system or a civil law system in, in France necessarily, but if that means that also the legislature has been changing what personal dismissal regulation means mm -hmm. over time. What if in the case that um, privatization happens, and would there be actually a change in HRM practices as now your shift change from social obligations to maximizing shareholder values? So do you observe? <laughs> now, um, I was wondering to what extent this is a general trend, or if there are differences between sectors. So, if there, are, if, if you have some insight in that. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Um, because of the globalization trends you mentioned, does French workers generally feel like the their position got threatened by uh, foreign um, students or foreign workers coming from the other parts of Europe, or do they feel they are still secured in their system of protection, or um, has this caused any changes in uh, immigration policies? among human uh, resource managers nowadays because I notice that some of them just move the um, uh, employees to another country to avoid the high labor cost or something. I don't know whether your definition about personal dismissal includes such kind of phenomenon. For example, if you look at what Nokia did, they just moved some energy, uh, engineers and other staff into Asia, into Africa, into America, and it's obligatory. You don't have any choice. And um, something like that. Mm, yes. Ah, and some some uh, international media groups. They just move the journalists maybe from Paris to London, or the yeah, other Anglo-Saxon system try to lower the labor cost and maybe increase the possibility to fire the staff in the end. So. When you do the research, did you consider such kind of new practices? Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, it was really interesting because I actually think that like the whole human resource management is kind of in the core of this bigger process of shareholder maximization and financialization because at the end it's kind of the people who keep it at life. And that's also what I the question I have. Um, don't you or do you think that this system kind of reinforces itself? Like you have certain and a certain, uh, let's say, for instance, the labor contractual relations, which actually send a signal also to the workers who behave then in that way of the signal that they got, like that they only have to, for instance, behave in a really short-term maximization. They just keep their position for two or three years, and then they move on, and it's much more of a labor market-based approach. And that's also how they behave, and that's also what kind of again triggers then the changes of the system. So it's kind of this chain, or in my feeling at least, that keeps it alive and how is that important. And then the second question I have is, um, you talked about the global and local employees um, who are different, that the local ones can feel a bit abandoned and differently managed. Um, how is this transfer actually? Because I mean, okay, even at the global level, at some point they must recruit new people. And so that you could maybe about talk about the recruitment process if that also changed. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry, I, I want to add one phenomenon <laughs> to my question. No, the same question. The question is the same. It just, uh, some companies like, like Ernst Young, they just chose to uh, make you ask for a leave obligatory during the crisis. They wouldn't give you salary, but you can just take a long leave. It's obligatory. And I want to know your opinion. Okay. Um, Okay, <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> for all these um, commentaries and, uh, and questions. Uh, I will start uh, with um, 
uh, the question of uh, my uh, two reviewers, <laughs> and after I will try to, to respond to the question. Um, maybe uh, concerning the sample, uh, it's true that it's a, it's a small sim a sample, but uh, our aim is not was wasn't to uh, to constitute a representative sample. It was not our aim. Uh, our study is a comprehensive one, uh, so we uh, we try and it's uh, the, the uh, it's the way I, I continue to do my research. Uh, I try to analyze and to understand um, mechanisms. Uh, we linked different phenomena, as I uh, show you at the beginning of my presentation, uh, to replace management uh, within a global and systemic approach with uh, a financialization, with globalization, and with uh, different transformation. So um, uh, it's not representative, but it's not a problem for us. I just try to understand phenomenon. And uh, in fact, it's. Um, uh, when you when you use case studies, uh, you are on a, uh, you're not on a, a representative uh, objective of research. In fact, so um, it's not um, it's not a representative uh, sample, but it's just case studies uh, in order to better understand mechanism and linked and interaction. If you use um, representative samples, sometimes it's very difficult to analyze a very complex, complex relation and multidimensional rela relation. So uh, it's a way to, to, to study um, uh, uh, complex uh, relationships. And it's uh, uh, the aim is to better understand, not to verify or not to prove. It's just better comprehension. Um, uh, so for the sample, um, maybe I will add um, a precision concerning uh, the legislation and the French legisla legislation. Alors, <laughs> it doesn't work. Why? Ouais. Tu crois que j'ai le ça? I know why. Voilà. Yes. Um, in fact, uh, there in a legislative evolution in France, but also in Europe and also... Uh, in fact, in France, the situation is uh, we have a law uh, since 2008. Uh, we have the law on the modernization of the labor contract. And um, now it's possible for employers and employees to end employment relationships of the, on the basis of uh, mutual or common agreement. Uh, that is without resorting uh, to uh, dismissal procedures. Uh, what we see is that uh, this, um, these new procedures, uh, common agreement, uh, have reached a new height in 2044. Uh, and it's a uh, very increase, uh, this process is uh, uh, very important. Uh, so, in fact, with um, such legislative changes, uh, in fact, underline the conception of employment relation, as you know, as a game or as a bilateral and reversible contract, uh, rather than a collective dynamics. When, when we say, you say it's a game, I don't know really what you mean. Uh, because for me, um, social relations are very uh, complicated. And uh, social relations, it's more complicated for me than, uh, intro than to introduce market uh, mechanisms into hierarchy. 
for example. You know, so it's not a game because it's social relation and uh, uh, it's very, uh, there are, there are de uh, uh, a lot of dimensions, there are culture, there are power, there are affective dimension, psychological one also. And uh, so it's not a game, it's not just a contract, it's social relation for me and social dimension. Do you know what is my... Uh, actually, I would love to add a point. Uh, the reason why I say standing point is because of the social relationship as well. Because we have this kind of social attack, attraction, uh, attachment, you yeah. can say that. Um, it's because in our mind, we have a kind of, uh, for example, in French, you have a patriotic mm -hmm. stuff, or you have a, a communi communitarian, um, communitarian hypothesis, we say that. Uh, for example, in your mind, that's in your mind. If you say that's that's just, if we, uh, the patriotism is just, then we trust it. Then we analyze from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. But do you think that's good? Um, I mean, for example, I work in France as well. Actually, I've been here for three years, and I work here for two years. I got a CDE contract with the uh, company, and I work for it. I have a lot mm -hmm. of experience by uh, listening to those complaints in your paper. It, it's around my life <laughs> every day, actually. So I can feel I can feel that in France is a, actually a very um, patriotic country. For example, this year we have only uh, no, a few months ago we have a new law, uh, employee law. It's talking about uh, people who work less than 27 hours could not get a CDE contract which means all those students around here, we will never get a contract because we are allowed to work only for 17.5 hours per week. <laughs> so that's kind of a burden to, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> to a filter mm -hmm. for your employment stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's but, yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, in fact, uh, the, the question, the major question is how to articulate flexibility and necessary need for flexibility for employers, but not only for employers, for employees also, and regulation. Because if uh, work employment is a game, it's an unbalanced game, do you know? Um, and uh, in fact, the, uh, there is a balance of power between employers and employees which can be very unequal. So is the reason why it's necessary for me uh, to articulate flexibility and uh, more uh, and hard law and the public regulation in order to protect some employees who uh, for who are very difficult uh, in fact so um, uh, what I, uh, what I want to, uh, to say is that uh, it's an unequal game. It's an unequal system. The employment relation is an unequal relation. So it's necessary uh, to regulate this uh, relation. But uh, of course, uh, in, my pap uh, in our paper, we are focused on employees. It's our, uh, but of course for employers there are some difficulties uh, and they need flexibility, I know that. But how to articulate flexibility and uh, of course the necessity to protect uh, employees in this unbalanced uh, game, uh, in fact. And in, so, in some uh, small, uh, small firm, uh, sometimes employers uh, are in a bad situation and some employees have a lot of power. In, of course, I know that. But in, uh, my, in my focus is on global financialized multinational, financialized firm in that firm, in this firm, within this firm, this large firm, uh, uh, relationships are very, very, very unequal. Uh, it's so, so it's necessary to, um, to, for me, it's my point of view, it's really my point of view, uh, and I try to, to mobilize the result uh, to uh, explain this point of view, of course, but I have a point of view. When you teach and when you make research in human resource management, you have a point of view. Uh, 
because it's uh, the way you see humans, the way you see firm, the way the way you see uh, uh, work. So you, uh, it's an ideal, ideological. Uh, <laughs> Uh, point of view, of course, and I try to uh, mobilize the result uh, to, to explain that. But the way uh, I conduct my research, it's a point of view also, because I choose to observe what I want to observe, you know. Uh, so uh, it's just my point of view. I try to have re result, uh, a serious results with my methodology, well, uh, case studies, but... Um, so, uh, concerning, um, uh, concerning the definition of uh, personal dismissal, in fact, in the law, there, are n there is no definition of personal dismissal. It's uh, all uh, or it's all reasons that uh, were not linked to economic situation of the firm. So in fact, it uh, it will it will be a faulty or not, uh, and um, uh, in our sample, uh, personal dismissal uh, was uh, were linked with um, a performance appraisal uh, system, and in fact, uh, personal dismissal uh, is. Um, uh, we have personal dismissal when uh, we when your objectives are bad, and uh, uh, it's a, it's a way to link to personal dismissal and performance uh, measure, in fact. But there is no uh, definition of what is personal uh, reason or personal uh, uh, dismissal. It was. Uh, all not linked with economic situation of the firm. And of course, uh, in our sample, uh, firm, firms use uh, this procedure to downsize, uh, in fact. Uh, so there is a substitution between the two, uh, the two measures. So, uh, uh, but it's... Uh, uh, what else? Um, so, so... Uh, a what, sorry? Uh, yes, uh, so uh, in fact when we, um, when we conducted this survey, uh, we, uh, it was in the frame of a project uh, with uh, two team, uh, three teams, uh, a team uh, of managers, researcher, a management researcher, a team of sociological researcher and a team of le, um, uh, law. <laughs> and uh, they studied uh, all the, um, all the, uh, with the Conseil des Prudhommes, they worked with the Conseil des Prudhommes and uh, they, um, they studied all the, um, all the reclamation and all the, but uh, in fact, uh, uh, for the firm, it's not a problem to uh, this, uh, this aspect. And uh, for, um, uh, for employees, it's very, very hard for uh, them uh, to do because uh, there is a lot of... Um, uh, uh, ...souffrance uh, with this process. So, uh, so, in fact, um, uh, they stopped uh, before sometimes. And, uh, and sometimes, of course, a uh, court uh, re redefine uh, and, uh, and change uh, the, <coughs> the dismissal. Uh, but uh, it's ve very difficult for an employee to, uh, to sustain the process, and uh, it's hard for them. Uh, in our sample. Can I just want a case? <laughs> Actually, I have two yes. cases to answer this question. Uh, I have a friend who is uh, 15 years old. Uh, who used 15 to years old? 50. 50. Zero. Uh, who used to work for an, uh, as an engineer anyway, a hard, hard engineer. And uh, she was fired like for a personal reason, uh, this message. Um, what is the, the reason? Uh, personal reason. <laughs> and what? Yeah, personal reason. And, but she accepts. Why? Because the compensation is really high. She doesn't need to find another job. Or, um, and then she retired. 
because she got a high compensation and she's not suing. Mm -hmm. And I have a second which has the certain uh, amount. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, a friend of my, a friend of my friend, who got this measles for a personal reason, maybe just for downsizing. Uh, mm -hmm. So her salary used to be only three thousand, and she worked there only for two years. But after this dismissal, she can get the real salary for two years, which means, uh, no, 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 let me see. She got compensation of nine, uh, 90,000 euro, totally. So she get back to China. <laughs> so did you hear me what, what I say? So her salary is only 3,000. She got uh, how many times? <laughs> 30 times of the compensation. That's what happened in France. So normally they don't go to the court, they just get a conversation and leave. Uh, uh, concerning it's, not, it's not the usual case in the way that people you know, get so, yeah. many years of conversation. So. Okay, okay. That's, but that's a real case. <laughs> yeah, for, for engineers, for, for the mm. high potential people, I think yeah. it's, it's the category of high potential people that gets two years, one year, <laughs> three years of uh, conversation. Well, for not, us not it's for totally the others. different. Yeah. For example, I got I work in somewhere and I haven't been paid for a year and I, I, I just didn't go to the court. I'm so powerless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a, yeah. Yes, it's a small, small, small elite in fact of high potential who yeah. can uh, negotiate, uh, negotiate really well there. So that's why we're talking about bargaining power. Mm -hmm. If we don't have bargaining power, why? Mm -hmm. There's nothing to say. Mm -hmm. But they, they, um, they don't have to yeah. register their reasons. Like when they say it's a personal dismissal, they don't have to give like from a list of 10 possibilities what that personal dismissal means because it would be interesting to see like what if there was a, um, an increase in, in one, or one or two of, of the specific reasons for personal dismissal mm -hmm. that over time how that's how that's changed, but if they just say like, "Oh, this is a personal dismissal," and then they don't have to say anything after that. Mm -hmm. In fact, the reason, um, the major reason, is uh, when uh, employee don't uh, uh, don't reach uh, the uh, objective. Uh, it's the major, major, major reason uh, for this uh, sort of dismissal, and uh, is um, is the reason why it's. Um, it's easy, in fact, to, uh, to substitute personal and economic reason because it's easy to give objectives that is very difficult to reach, in fact. It's not so complex to do that. So uh, it's really... Uh, um, there is a scandal use with IBM uh, because um, uh, uh, we have um, inside uh, within IBM Corporation, uh, we have a performance appraisal system, and uh, we have four uh, levels. Uh, when uh, you are at the level four, for example, uh, it's a reason. It's it's a reason. Uh, we have not. It's, uh, it means that uh, we have not reached uh, your objectives, and so it's possible for your employer uh, to, de to, to dismiss uh, for personal reason. And uh, in fact, in 2000, it was uh, this uh, history, uh, each manager team received a number of level four uh, to give in, uh, inside uh, their team. Uh, so uh, personal dismissal was really uh, used uh, to down south and to uh, uh <laughs> do you understand yeah maybe you want to answer other questions that have been raised or um do you think do, have you yeah. answered already to all no 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 no, no. Uh, maybe yeah. you can <laughs> you can Okay, if you want to, to take a few minute, more minutes to answer. Yeah, but there is another one. So we'll yeah, see. Uh, sorry. Uh, I have two questions. The first one, <laughs> I was I was reading an article about the immigration uh, about the immigration and the whole of the immigrants in the, in the the human resources area. And there there was a, there is a problem with many countries. Well, it wasn't the case in, in France, 
but where firms were using some kind of a, a policies against immigrants to protect their their own employees from their own country. So I wanted to know how is the the whole of the immigrant in France if there is any difference in their legal situation or if they have the same rights. And also, there is a problem that I see in Brazil, but I think it's everywhere actually. Is there a, pro a project or an institution that tries to educate the, the employee and to show them which rights they have? Because in Brazil, it's the, the law, the legal system in Brazil and in France is really similar to the, to the labor market. And in Brazil, we have a lot of rights for the employees, but many of them don't go to court simply because they don't know the rights. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know if there is some kind of, at least, trying to educate the, the employees about their their, mm -hmm. their real rights and what. About this point, uh, in fact, in France uh, and in the firm, uh, in the firms we have studied, it's um, the major role of union, local union, uh, to inform employees. Uh, uh, about their their rights and uh, they, they they do that but uh, what uh, it was surprising uh, uh, is that uh, in fact local unions um, don't show uh, um, an opposition attitude against this evolution mm -hmm. and against this substitution of uh, uh, dismissal and um, they uh, uh, they chose. They chose to uh, um, to lead, not to lead, to accompany, to uh, and to to help to help salaries in this, uh, to help employees uh, to uh, in this situation, and to help employees to confront employers. But they accept this evolution. Uh, so it's uh, it's. Um, uh, yes, it's uh, it's surprising, but uh, because um, in fact it's a little um, uh, so uh, so it's a role for me. It's a major role of uh, local union to to inform about that um, it's within the firms. In fact, uh, concerning the convergence of the of the models uh, across countries. Um, uh, there it I said b some uh, few words about that. In fact, um, uh, there are disagreements uh, concerning uh, the, um, the evolution of uh, or the shift, a global shift toward financialization across country. And there is literature about um, diversity of capitalism. And uh, this uh, literature uh, explains that uh, there are national uh, specificities. And it's the reason why uh, I uh, explain the situation in French. So I think there is a global trend. Uh, there is a global trend towards uh, more flexibility and toward uh, uh, a more contractual relationship uh, within uh, within firms and uh, and linked uh, with the financialization and globalization of strategies. Uh, in fact, there are, there are a global trend uh, to introduce introduce more markets, more market principles. Uh, inside uh, or within a hierarchical organization. Uh, and it's a global trend, but f of course uh, it depends of uh, uh, so socio-institutional context and uh, uh, each country uh, have different, uh, uh, this trend is di it's a different degree and, um, and uh, different expression of that uh, linked to socio-institutional context of country. And in France, there is uh, this uh, uh, odd law uh, about uh, about employment. Um, uh, to make a link with the CSR, uh, who have um, a seminary uh, about CSR, uh, this study um, can show the limit of uh, a voluntary initiative of employers. I think CSR is very important, uh, but uh, um, uh, 
it's necessary to articulate soft law and hard law. Uh, because uh, just soft law is uh, very difficult because, uh, uh, yes, because uh, unbalanced power relations. So uh, uh, it's, um, uh, yet it's a question of power relation, it's a question of, uh, so it's necessary. A, a very, very, very major question is how to articulate inside within the firm flexibility and regulation and hard regulation. It's really uh, uh, what is the, the point uh, and uh, uh, we, we need uh, autonomy because we need innovation, we need uh, uh, initiative, we need, uh, of course it's necessary, but uh, uh, when you see what <laughs> I seen when I conducted this, uh, this study, you say, oh my God, uh, we need regulation and hard law because uh, there is, um, it's very difficult. So it's the, this articulation and <laughs> I think that um, uh, what is very difficult uh, when you uh, when you teach when uh, wh wh when you teach human resource management and you speak about the evolution, <laughs> uh, it's very difficult to find solutions uh, because everybody say, but find a positive solution of this model. Yes, for a few 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 people, it's very positive, but. Uh, in fact, uh, it's a very, very small uh, elite, I see this, and it's okay for us, for them. <laughs> it's okay for me, I'm, je suis pas à plaindre. Mais, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's the, with, uh, inside this, um, Uh, within this context, it's very difficult to find space to uh, manage uh, human resources uh, because it's, uh, you have no spaces uh, in multinational uh, with financialization and with globalization of strategies, in fact, because globalization of strategy conduct to mergers, conduct to acquisition, and uh, it's necessary to downsouth. Uh, so, um, so it's difficult. I don't know how to teach human resource management inside multinational uh, with uh, these pressures. Uh, so we have to desserrer les taux <laughs> uh, uh, Desserrer les taux de la compétition uh, to, uh, to reduce competition, to give space uh, to, uh, to have a human relationship and uh, to, uh, to innovate and to... Um, it's my point of view. <laughs> so. With my bad English, it's very hard, but... Uh, so maybe if you want some more detail... Um, convergence, definition, personal... Uh, it's a what I said, just, just when, what I said, in fact, it's linked with when you say dehumanizing or lack of competition. Oh, no, I had a question about state uh, when you when the government being uh, when this privatization. Then, how would the human resource practices change? Before, I mean after after privatization. So before, uh, say for example, lab pools. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, uh, it's difficult in uh, within this organization because because they have to deal with two uh, contradictory tendencies. In fact, with a lot of hierarchy, and uh, now uh, suddenly uh, they have to uh, employer employees and manager have to uh, deal with uh, private principles uh, in, comp in very competitive um, markets. So uh, it's, uh, it's maybe the reason why uh, the situation, the more difficult situation uh, and more difficult working condition are now 
within this organization like La Poste, France Telecom, uh, because it's very difficult uh, to change uh, the, to change the organization and to change the culture and uh, it's difficult for people who were engineers in, with uh, public value and, and, uh, to, uh, and now uh, to, uh, to sell uh, USB key uh, by phone. Uh, you know, and to be uh, and to be sailor, uh, and a lot of difficulty at work for employees is that um, under those evolutions uh, they uh, lose the sense of their work. Okay, can you think that with privatization the problem is uh, to change the culture, or the problem is the changing in culture? For instance, okay, uh, in France Telecom. Uh, with the privatization because I did not look at human resource management uh, but I worked on this sector and I saw really the um, how the culture has changed for some of the people especially the, not the high potential people mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it was really um, yes it was dramatic because all, all, everything has changed they had to change but they they also switch their cultural uh, uh, references. They, you know, in France Telecom, when there was there was a storm or something like that, and people could not have phone at home, and and they could just go on Sunday, just come back from home, go and re and, and repair and fix all the problems, etc. Now they are in another uh, completely different environment, mm -hmm. and all this culture of public services of public involvement has completely changed, and it's also true for the high potential people. I met some mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. very, 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 very top management people that told, okay, I saw all the all these changes at in all the structure, but also at the top of the structure. People have completely changed the way they deal, they, they, they manage the firm and, and they are not really happy. And, and if someone says something that is not in line with the uh, shareholder value, etc., etc. They say, okay, get rid of you, and, and you will have a beautiful office, and you will stay in this office, nothing to do. But anyway, you and, and this change is also it's, it's not only a problem of changing culture. Maybe it's the culture related to privatization, and uh, which is the problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, of course, and um, uh, in France Telecom, or maybe in the, uh, the post, I don't remember, uh, to help uh, employees to change uh, uh, their culture, uh, they have coach, and uh, it was uh, awful for me, uh, because they have to, employees, in general, have to write on the on a paper, they have to write uh, the key principles of their last work. Be before, before the changing. So they write and they have to burn, to burn this paper because it's a change. So uh, they have to burn. It's, it's uh, very violent uh, to... Uh, no? It's a uh, coaching of uh, the... Actually, with this question that I, I asked you when you said, actually, yeah, you have a certain performance structure or system, actually, and the system changes the culture. And then because people say, OK, there's a, is a private system behind it that, for instance, pays me my salary depending on my work, what I do, it's kind of what the system expects me to behave, so I behave like that. And that kind of goes back to the system. So it requires, at the end, the system to people to behave, that they fuel the system. And it's kind of this internal process of, if you actually want to change anything in that, uh, I think really it needs so much more regulation on that. And also, when I see how, which is with the second thing, how you recruit new people, it's not just changing people from privatization process, but also how you damage and influence young people going in there with the first weeks of seminars and you kind of brand them and you tell them this is our company and this is our values and they're really kind of in there, they're so brainwashed um, just kind of buying those values and I think uh, this is crazy just hardly giving you any room and freedom and you just pass this on to your colleagues mm -hmm. so you're part of this big machine and uh, yeah, I don't mm. know. But yes and um, uh, for, um, 
for France Telecom, uh, La Poste. Um, in fact, with the privatization, it was not possible for them to, uh, to dismiss to, uh, their employees because they are protected uh, by... Uh, so uh, they can, in fact, um, they can make external hiring. Uh, so it's a difficulty and uh, they have to... Uh, so the discourse was uh, you have to be flexible and you have to... Uh, to um, yes, to burn your... Uh, uh, your, your less competency and try to have new key, new skills and... Uh, yeah, and maybe it's not just direct, but it's also internally of just lowering down those people because I've worked in, in a project in Germany because in Germany uh, Deutsche Bank bought the Postbank mm -hmm. and it was really this big clash because Postbank are those formal people, public servants yeah. um, and they're becoming part of this big international, multinational uh, bank which is like has completely different values Mm -hmm. And it was systematically that you would find in meetings when you had people from both companies, because they belong to one company now, mm -hmm. together, really lowering them down, telling them this is not how we work, this is not mm -hmm. right, you have to prepare better, you have to prepare different, although they were just used to a different way of how to work, mm -hmm. which might have even been better, but it's just, you know, this introduction from mm -hmm. things above and really suppressing people. Mm -hmm. And I found that, like, horrible. Mm -hmm. Well... I was wondering if you could still say something about the differences between sectors, because I can imagine that it's very different if you're talking about, for example, the financial mm -hmm. industries or steel companies that are all like, mm -hmm. that have to change as well, or mm -hmm. not ever. Maybe to but uh, I don't know. the direction, the differences between sectors, is, it, is there a difference between sector, or is it a difference between companies, or just companies are doing the same? Uh, I mean, for instance, I can refer, I was interviewed few years ago by Bloomberg TV about the, what happened in Alcatel Lucent after the merger, uh, the merger uh, when they decided to send <coughs> part of the research team, research and development team in China. Okay? Mm. So the, 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 the former CEO of this company said, okay, we want to be a firm without manufacturing sector. <laughs> they just want to have ideas and then I don't know where is the manufacturing sector. Okay, but even the even thinking, the innovation, etc., was also delocalized. It's also your, part of your question, uh, and so is it. Uh, and I think Alcatel Lucent was completely crazy. At I mean, all the policy was, uh, and now the situation of the film is completely. Um, oui, film is down, okay. So is, is it an is it an issue of sector? Because maybe in this sector, we in the ICT sector. Uh, especially in the, to the beginning of 2000, there was a, a movement uh, with the, the bubble, etc., etc. Or is it uh, is it an issue of sector, or is it an issue of financialization for all the firms? Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, when you uh, when you began this study, we used a statistical uh, which, was, which were produced by the DARES, uh, an institute... Uh, oh, yes, and uh, this, uh, those statistical uh, number uh, show that um, personal dismissals were used in a group in multinational uh, and concern uh, the skilled employees is the reason why you have uh, a focus uh, our study on these uh, employees and uh, in three sector uh, um, electronic sector and uh, um, agroalimentaire food food sector and uh, informatic sector so it was uh, but in fact, for me, it's uh, an evolution across sectors and uh, linked with financialization. Of course, there are specificity linked with some sectors, but they across sectors. And uh, in our study, we have food sector, we have electronic sector, we have bank sector, uh, we have uh, grand distribution sector. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, it's, uh, I, for me, it's, uh, it's a trend across sector with uh, specificity, of course, and uh, uh, this um, 
with different degrees, different periods, different. Uh, uh, but we have details uh, in the article. We have for each firm, uh, so for each sector, in fact, we have the detail of the, uh, the strategic shift and uh, the evolution of the shareholder structure. And you, s you see that, in fact, it's a cross sector with different degrees, but it's a cross uh, sector Axel, Cattel, Danone, Nestle, Carrefour, and uh, IBM. Uh, so, uh, other studies that link uh, that less stressed people have higher degrees of productivity? <laughs> because in this case, that is good. Uh, 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 no, it's uh, um, <laughs> uh, it's uh, in fact it's with your creation uh, the impact of HRM. I'm not able uh, to measure impact of HRM measure. I don't know if I pay, uh, if I use uh, uh, appraisal performance appraisal system linked with uh, compensation, increased competition. I don't know if you will be more motivated. Uh, it's very difficult. It's impossible for me. But I'm alone, not alone. But we are few uh, in this position. Uh, when you teach uh, human resource management, you have use this tool. You will have this motivation. Human is more complex than that. For me, it's uh, impossible. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's impossible to obtain uh, the perfect uh, attitude. And uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, we are more complex than that. So, uh, linked to uh, with your objective when you are employer, linked to your value, linked to your sector, linked to your uh, competition condition. Uh, you you uh, you prioritize this style or this style, but uh, and when I um, when I meet industry, uh, I worked before on a formation. Uh, employer tell me uh, show us uh, that uh, make formation paid, and we will make formation. Show that uh, make CS. Trained, sorry, uh, show that uh, CSR pay and we will make CSR, we will develop CSR practices. It's not the good, <laughs> the good way to, uh, for me, it's not the good way uh, to prob problemati problematize. Uh, it's difficult. For, I, I think uh, uh, you try. You try this, uh, this tool, you try this, uh, and you see what, uh, and uh, uh, according to your value, according to your objective, according to your pressure, you choose. Uh, and you try to, uh, but it's not uh, impact. <laughs> uh, my point of my way of thinking. Did you, um, for the study, did you talk to HR managers, how they actually feel like that? Because you can imagine, because they're in this middle between and they get the pressure from upper management to say, like, you're responsible, for instance, for 30% cost reduction. And then they just, since they cannot really calculate the impact they actually have by doing certain things, they don't know what to do. So at the end, to really do something calculable is the only way of firing you. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of in this middle, right? So I don't know, how do they feel about it? Uh, oh, it's difficult to, to produce measurement of uh, of phenomenon, and uh, uh, yes, it's it's difficult to. Um, I don't know. In fact, uh, uh, I think it's important to uh, for me and to conclude. Maybe, or if you want to to continue, it's possible for me. Uh, but uh, my English will be worse, 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 but it's not a problem. Uh, and um, uh, in fact, I don't know, and it's not my position to say there are a good way to uh, manage human resources and there are a good way to manage. It's to, uh, to show that if you do some, di so if you take some direction, if you uh, follow some trend, uh, what are the consequences? And 
my research uh, I regret because I show only the social consequences of this evolution but there are environmental consequences of also this trend and I think in management studies uh, it's necessary to develop a survey uh, who try to understand the consequences of management choices on social dimension and by environmental dimension and to say and to to say stop it will be very very difficult to go on and to continue in this uh, condition uh, and uh, uh, there is a trend um, uh, uh, the so-called critical management studies uh, in management who try to uh, uh, who try to uh, uh, to analyze how it will be if uh, uh, we um, uh, we show these consequences and how to be uh, how to produce um, research uh, with economic objective, of course but is also, uh, we also integrate consequences on the social condition and our environmental condition, of course. So, uh, so maybe it's a, this, it's maybe a great model, I don't know. What I know is that a few winners and a lot of losers. And what I know is there is greater inequality and inequity. But maybe it's a good model for, for some, for other. For me, it's produced greater inequality and equity. And how can we go on, continue with greater, greater, greater inequality and equity uh, in developed countries also?